Hey guys, Mickey with carrytrainer.com, Drew behind the cameras and editing desk. I'm gonna show you today a very simple way to get very sharp knives very easily without anything expensive using sandpaper. So if you've always wanted to learn how to sharpen a knife well, and you're confused by all of the stuff on the market, I'm gonna show you a very easy way. And if you learn how to do it this way, if you have expensive whetstones and things like that, it's gonna make perfect sense. Sandpaper, first of all, what grid of sandpaper do you use? We're gonna be using sandpaper today from about 400 grit, and we could actually use a coarser grit, we'll talk about that in a second, up to three to 4,000 grit. What does the grit of sandpaper mean? Let's start with that. So the coarsest grit that I'm using today is 400. If you've ever done any woodworking, maybe you've used 60 or 80 or 100 grit, Maybe you've done some auto body work and you've used 2,000, 6,000 grit. What that means, if it's 400 grit, what I see here, 400 grit, that means for every square inch of this sandpaper, there is about 400 of the little gritty pieces. So if you had 60 grit, imagine 60 little cutting grits per square inch, one inch by one inch. If I had 3,000 grit, I would have 3,000 of those little cutting bits per square inch. So in a one inch by one inch square, 6,000 grit, there'd be 6,000 of them. So the higher the number, the tinier those little cutting bits are. And that means the smaller the little scratches that they're gonna make as they abrade whatever surface you're working on, metal, paint, wood, whatever. So why sandpaper? Well, it's super cheap. Um, I don't need to resurface it. So I have wet stones that are 50 to 100 years old, stuff people have given me, old woodworkers. I have a, a, a whetstone given to me by a dear family friend, Alois Hostrider, my nephew Kanan's great-grandpa, uh, who I got to work with as a young man. He was a uh, amazing German cabinet, German cabinet maker, and he would keep his stones in jars of kerosene, which is another discussion altogether. He gave me one of those when I was about 16, 17 years old that I still have and use to this day. This method works for really any blade. We've got this ax uh, that I did a great video on. I don't say a great video, I should say an explanation on for you guys a year or two ago where we sharpened it using the same method. If you go watch that, maybe Drew will put a link up. I cut myself pretty badly, which we won't do today. The tape is here because of how I sometimes hold the ax. There's nothing wrong with the ax handle. I've had this beauty for nearly 30 years. So, this works for anything. What do you need? You need some sandpaper, you need a block of wood, something that's got a flat surface. So I went out to the wood pile and I grabbed this chunk of two by six, whacked a foot off. I'm using a paper towel here folded up to keep her flat in front of me. And we're gonna start with a heavier grit. Remember, the lower the numbers, the heavier the grit. Why 400? Because the blades that I'm gonna demo with are in decent shape, they're dull. So here's a, I'm gonna start by using a cheap kitchen knife. I think you should too. Don't grab your expensive everyday carry knife like my Spider Co. I got a, a really nice cut co here, but it's really dull. And a, uh, who knows, you know, a couple dollar Chinese made piece of junk blade, but check, check that out. You know, I'm having to like saw through there. I can feel the grid on there. Not very sharp at all. The angle matters. The amount of pressure matters, but I think we make this stuff too hard. What are we doing? We are grinding a bevel back into the blade. We're doing it in a manner that we don't curve it over. So if you use like a grinder or something high speed, you tend to overheat the metal pretty easily, which then you start to talk about the properties of steel or whatever the material is made out of, and you can screw that up. This system here is super basic and you're not gonna create uh, a heat or friction issue. So we're gonna take our block of wood, we're gonna place it in front of us. Uh, a couple things that you could do to make this better for you. Um, you could get some rubber and use some glue and glue a piece of rubber to the block of wood. We wanna make sure the wood is flat, uh, meaning a flat surface. You wanna make sure that if you put some rubber on here, there's no bumps in the rubber. What kind of rubber would you use? Something like an inner tube. Um, you could go to a uh, craft store and buy like a sheet of some rubber. Uh, the elastic stretchy bands like the TheraBand, like a physical therapist gives you, you could glue a piece of that on there. I like the way I'm about to do it. It works for me and, and you'll see in a second why I don't need a bunch of that, but it is okay if you do.
You could also put a little moisture on here and that will help it stick uh, as well. But I like the way I'm gonna show you. So first things first, if we want to, we can take a Sharpie and we could take the Sharpie and we can highlight the edge. Hope you guys can see that. Here's the side without the Sharpie. Here's the side with it. You just see a little bit of that ink. You see it there? So now as I'm honing and grinding away, I'm gonna see that ink disappear. So I'll put my paper down in front of me, starting with the highest grit. If this had like chips or dents or something like that in it, I might need to take a file to re-straighten uh, the edge. But this, this edge isn't beat up or dented, it's just really dull. I'm gonna place this in front of me where it's easy for me to work and we are gonna be pulling or pushing rather away. So I'm not digging like a snow plow, I am dragging this across the surface. You see that I'm dragging. Take a look at the knife, they're not all the same. Could be 15, could be 20 degrees. Just gonna mirror what's there. Again, practicing on something cheap, you're gonna practice this, it's gonna seem like second nature. Enough talking. I'm gonna place the knife onto the abrasive and I'm gonna stroke it away from me. In addition to the ink that's on there, so you see where that ink is now gone, I made about a one and a half inch pass. I'm gonna move the knife over, I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure, and I'm gonna just gently stroke it. We get to the curved part of the blade, and I am going to carefully, following that curve, there's a little bit of finesse that's required for this. We can see where I have ground. I'm gonna do both sides, except I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing and not just talk to you. Looks pretty good. I'm ready for the next grit already. So 400 grit goes aside, 600 grit comes on board. Same thing we just did, pass, 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 pass. Truth be told, this grit that I'm dealing with here, I could make this knife usable in the amount of passes that we've just done. Yep. So just in that little bit, we've already made it that much sharp. 600 grit, done. Now, I'm only doing a few passes because this knife isn't trashed. I might need to do more depending on uh, what I've got going on. As we go up in grit, if you've done some woodworking, I was a, a contractor for years, a carpenter, cabinet milder, hardwood flooring uh, company owner. When we sand floors, you start out maybe 50 grit, 60 grit, uh, 80 grit, depending on the, the type of wood you're installing. If you're tearing off like old finish, maybe you're gonna go 36 or 24 grit, super, super heavy. So remember grits per inch, like we had a, a 18 or 16 grit, that looked like pea gravel on the sandpaper, it was so thick. As we go higher in grit, the higher number, the smaller the particles, we're trying to remove the scratch marks that we put in there with the heavier grit. So that's all we're doing here. I'm not going crazy, I'm not making this hard. And you can feel it. You feel as you're moving, if there is any catchy spots, you feel if there's any parts that, that maybe need some TLC or some love. You feel if there's some areas that are goobered up. The thing we don't want to do, we want to be careful we don't push the flat part of the blade on here and scratch it all to hell. If it's just a hunting knife or a utility knife and you don't care, fine. 800 aside, 1,000 on board now. And now, I'm jumping grits fairly quickly. I'm also, I've got a lot of close grit numbers here, as you see. We went 600, or 400, 600, 800, 1,000, right? Uh, if you try to go from 600 to 6,000, the, the 6,000 grit paper, it's gonna take you a week to remove the scratches from the 600. Even though 600 is pretty fine paper for a woodworker, a metal finisher, or an auto body guy, it's not very fine at all, is it, if you know what I'm talking about. Pretty easy peasy here. I'm gonna get you guys a close up.
Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, we're getting there now, boy. All right, we'll come to 12 hundo. You guys see how easy this is, though, right? Now, the funny thing in the comment section, I'll just talk as I go here. There's going to be guys that hate this. They're going to say you're doing it wrong. I just did a video the other day on, uh, on doing some lube, gunfighter gun oil, on doing some lube for firearms. We, we own and operate gunfighter gun oil, and there are a lot of guys that are happy to tell me that I don't know how to lubricate a gun correctly. I don't understand why people want to get so excited about that. We started this video showing you a way. Why do I... Why do I want to show you this way? Well, it works. I've been sharpening stuff from chainsaw blades to planer blades to kitchen knives to hunting knives and all points in between scrapers for floors for decades. Uh, if you do it right, you're going to create a good usable edge. If you do it right, it'll be easy to clean up the next time. What do I mean by that? So my daily carry knife I will do this to it maybe once a week, just a few passes. And just from the little bit of work that we do with this knife, you know, maybe uh, opening a package or uh, cutting on some food or whittling a stick or whatever the heck you need to do with your daily carry knife, you just true the edge up. You're not waiting till it's completely ruined. And that is really, that's nice, that's really the best way to do it. And when the more you practice, the faster and easier it'll be to do it to where uh, in my kitchen at home, I've got a little, a little tiny box in a drawer and it's got a couple things in it. It's also got, uh, for another video, a little leather strop in it that my friend from Auxiliary Manufacturing made me years ago which is basically uh, uh, the, the finest of the fine for the sandpaper. Uh, that really uh, is a nice finish, but I'll pull that box out every now and again, like a, once a week or two. And it, while I'm sitting waiting for coffee to brew, and I'll take that knife, 1,200 grit aside, 1,500 grit on board, and I'll get a couple passes done. And it just ensures that when my knife comes out, it's good to go. When my knife comes out, if I need to cut something, it's ready to go. And I know that most of all, I'm not going to have people making fun of me for having a dull knife because nobody, and I mean nobody, likes that, don't they? Do you like that? That looks really nice. You guys see that starting to polish up? I mean, it's getting sharp. I'm going to do a few more passes on this. And like I said, the angle of the dangle is something that you learn. There's a lot of knife sharpening equipment. One of the things that those pieces of equipment are trying to help the user do is keep the right angle. Through practice, you're going to sort it out, man. If you weren't a young lad, uh, trying to sharpen your, your buck knife or your imperial or your Swiss army knife on a stone and you didn't learn how to do it, well, now's the time. Now's the time. If you got a son or a daughter, teach them this. Teach them this so that they understand how to do it. Uh, you don't need fancy things. So this knife is starting to get to the point where it will easily cut you. I can see it. Uh, where are we at? 2,000 grit now. 2,000 grit. I can see the blade uh, starting to shine. Uh, I know if I screw up and jam myself with this, that's why I'm slowing down, it will easily start to cut my skin. So pay attention to what you're doing. And I'm applying force, not a crazy amount of force, but... Um, force nonetheless. As I'm moving the knife around, what I'm looking for, I'm, the lights coming off of the studio lights here are reflecting off of the, the surface that I'm grinding on here and allowing me to see areas that I need to touch. Mm-hmm. 2,000 grit, 25 hundo. 
how do you guys like to sharpen? You know, what's your go-to? What's your go-to? You know, you think about just having a sharpening stone, like you got my sharpening stone. That sharpening stone is just one grit, right? We could talk about oil or water. Do you want oil and water? Um, maybe, depends. I'm not gonna muddy, <laughs> I'm not gonna muddy this conversation though. I'm just showing you a simple way for 20 bucks of sandpaper and you know, think about how little, um, I'm using this, you get a lot of use out of this paper, 3,000. So we'll, so we'll finish this at this 3,000 grit today. That is really pretty. When we get the close-up set up here, you'll see this edge. I like to use my finger to hold the paper down because what it does for me, one, uh, it allows me to actually like balance myself as I'm doing this, but some people might find it easier to use their fingers. Uh, when, I'm using, when I'm using the ax, that is how I will do it. Um, but how you hold the sandpaper down is up to you. It's pretty. Let's see what that feels like. So, in a couple minutes of talking to you, we've taken wow, we've taken a really crummy knife uh, that was sitting in the drawer that definitely wouldn't cut a tomato, that definitely wouldn't cut anything like that, and now it is razor sharp, razor sharp, and. That's without a lot of effort. That's without a lot of skill with a chunk of dimensional two by six and some sandpaper. I hope this video helped. I hope it's uh, some food for thought for you on some things that you can do uh, to be more self-sufficient, to not have to throw things in the garbage. You know, knives like this, a lot of times people just toss them in the garbage, which this thing is now totally ready to go. They're not disposable. I mean, even though they're treated as such, this is now a, a really good uh, kitchen utensil or whatever you've got. I uh, hope this video helps you. I hope that you find uh, that you can improve your skills at taking care of your stuff. Be well. Don't be dickheads. Tell somebody you love them. Be careful uh, with these blades. They're not toys. Bye now. Podcast room, Steve. I'm writing a national anthem. It's going to be at folk festivals for gunfighter gun oil. Oh.
<laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even Bob Dylan. It was like a, it was like a love story. <laughs>